Alrighty, it's time to continue our adventure in The Legend of Zelda and Majora's Mask, so let's waste no time and pick up where we left off. I still have to free Terminus Guardians, so let's head to the Great Bay Coast to do just that. I start by finding a dead fish in the ocean and I'm already looking forward to a tasty meal. But it turns out that it's just a dying Zora. This guy, Mikau, turns out to be the guitarist of a Zora band. He goes on to tell me something about their vocalist losing a voice and laying some strange eggs. I don't really care about all that, but seal his soul into a mask to create myself a Zora mask. My new form comes with some benefits. I can now spend as much time as I want on the water, I can swim like a dolphin and use my new arm fins as boomerangs. Pretty cool stuff. Now that I'm in possession of all the transformative masks, let me share a little secret with you. Those things terrified me as a kid. Just look at the transformation Rue goes through every time he puts on a mask. <laughs> Thanks for the nightmares, Nintendo. With that trauma shirt, let's see what I have to do next. It turns out that the earlier mentioned vocalist Lulu is a descendant of the sages tasked with protecting the Great Bray Temple. So I have to help her out if I want to progress. The game said something about her strange eggs being stolen, so I guess that's a place to start at. I steal back some of the eggs from these Mario 64 ripoffs and make my way to the Gerudo Pirate Fortress. Oh, did I forget to mention? The Gerudo are pirates now. I steal a hookshot from them and go on a killing spree through the fortress. Undetected, of course, thanks to my new psychopath mask. <laughs> I save the remaining eggs and bring them to this researcher dude. Would you believe it? The eggs hatch and teach me a new song. Hmm, it's almost like there is a pattern here. The song restores Lulu's voice and this giant turtle shows up to bring me to the third dungeon. Thanks turtle bro. You may remember me telling you that I didn't mind the water dungeon's difficulty in Ocarina of Time and actually like it. That's totally not the case in this game. Yes, I do get the ice arrows in here and the dungeon isn't too long, but I have to go through this whole change the water current business, which is kinda tedious and sucks. And don't get me started on the boss, the fish monster Gyro, or whatever he's called. I think that guy is partially responsible for my aversion of fish. I kill the fucker eventually and free the third guardian. Yay! If my math is correct, there is only one more giant to be freed. So let's head to Ikana Canyon. I run into these ninja dudes who blow themselves up on defeat. That's awkward, and I have to help Pamela and her transformed father. Okay, I'll leave you two to whatever you're doing here. A stupid trading sequence comes up next, and I start to suspect that Nintendo ran out of ideas to increase the game's playtime. At least I get the mirror shield for my troubles. I'm further distracted by a mini dungeon where I have to fight Igor Du Ikana, the former and now undead king of Ikana Canyon. What a surprise! He teaches me a new song. The Elegy of Emptiness now allows me to create soulless shells of myself. Oh yes, Nintendo, go ahead and add more fuel to the nightmares. <laughs> I use my creepy doppelgangers to climb the stone tower and finally arrive at the last dungeon, the stone tower temple. Phew, it was about time. This is easily the coolest dungeon in the game. I have to use all three transformation masks to progress, I get the light arrows and use set arrows to flip the dungeon on its head. Pretty cool stuff. But there is one little taint on the dungeon's coolness factor. This dungeon has gaming history's most unnecessary lengthy puzzle and forces me to fight against the grim fucking reaper. I hate you game. The Stone Temple is also the most self-referential dungeon in the game. We meet the Visropes again, thankfully without their KKK hoods, and the boss is a group of giant sandworms. Thankfully, I can transform myself into a giant to beat their asses. 
or whatever a worm's equivalent of an ass is. Whew, that's it. We freed all four guardians and they promised me to help me in my fight against the Skull Kid. Great, I could now go ahead and skip over time to fight the Skull Kid, but you know, that's not how I roll. Instead, I want to spend some time with the people of Clocktown. I go on to talk to this lady here and she tells me the story of the four giants. Turns out that the guardians once lived among the people of Termina before they left for the four corners of the land. The guardians even were friends with a strange imp creature and the imp got really sad and angry about them leaving. Hmm, I wonder who that imp creature could be. Well, since I already talked about the masks and how to get them in the last video, I guess there is nothing else to do but to take a look at the final showdown. The door to the clock tower opens up again, I confront the skull kit and summon the guardian spirits to help me out. They actually managed to stop the moon from falling, but oh no! It turns out that Majora's mask got a will of its own. That's not great. The mask begins to overpower the guardians and flees into the moon. The brave hero I am, I immediately follow after. Whoa, this place is kinda peaceful. Is this heaven? I meet four creepy little kids here, all wearing masks of Terminus Guardians. They want me to play hide and seek with them and demand my hard earned masks. That sucks. I did tell you in the last video that you can get a very special mask at the end of the game. This is how. I end up giving those guys all my masks and talk to the fifth kit, the one wearing Majora's mask. He wants to play good guy versus bad guy, but since I don't have any masks left, he gives me the really awesome looking fierce deity mask. Sadly, this mask can only be used in the final boss fight. So let's check that one out. I confront Majora's mask and use my new toy to transform into a badass adult version of myself. The fierce deity mask makes this boss fight a piece of cake. But that's not the end. Majora transforms into this thing. And that thing. Oh great, more nightmare fuel. I do of course defeat Majora and I am rewarded with one of gaming history's most satisfying cutscenes. The evil moon is destroyed and it turns out that the skull kid actually is the little imp talked about in the previous story. Everything is fine and dandy since the giants are still his friends. The happy mask salesman shows up to get his mask back and mysteriously disappears. Tattle is reunited with her brother and insults me one last time. And last but not least, Clock Town is saved and the people there can go on to celebrate the carnival of time. I myself move on to bigger adventures. Or do I? I avoided this in the review itself, but it wouldn't feel right to leave this unmentioned. Yes, I am well aware of the fan theory stating that the events in Majora's Mask didn't really happen because Link died in the beginning. I won't go too much into detail, there surely are more competent people on YouTube doing so. But the basics go like this. Link dies chasing after the Skull Kid and is now trapped in Termina, which acts like some sort of purgatory. The characters and regions in the game deal with the five stages of grief. The people of Clocktown clearly represent denial, simply ignoring the falling moon. The Deku represent anger. The Gorons represent bargaining. Lulu clearly stands in for depression. And last but not least, Link's ascension of the Stone Tower, finding enlightenment in the light arrows, clearly represents acceptance. There are some arguments disputing the Link is dead theory. Some people just say that Termina is a parallel world. And there is the fact that our Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask hero is a direct ancestor of the hero in Twilight Princess. Just tell me how he pulled that trick off if he died as a kid. And let's not forget that we see Link back in the Lost Woods at the end of the game. Alive and well. But that doesn't mean that the theory is entirely false. It could still hold some truth if you simply change death with major loss. I didn't bring up the Skull Kid and the loss of his giant friends for no reason. Losing a friend can be dramatic too. Let's not forget that the troubles started with the Skull Kid getting Majora's Mask. 
an item certainly powerful enough to transform his emotions into something real. If you want to stay with the someone is dead theme, just think about the reason for Link's adventure into the Lost Woods. He is looking for a lost friend. But hey, that's just a theory. Uh, please don't copyright strike me, theory.